My name is uh, Imam Earl Alameen. I'm the uh, resident Imam here at the Muslim Community Cultural Center of Baltimore, but I'm also uh, the Vice President for Program Development at the National Center on Institutions and Alternatives, which um, has 650 uh, employees and maybe uh, anywhere from uh, 15 to 24 uh, percent are ex-offenders that we hire for human services uh, um, uh, jobs. As a matter of fact, um, Mr. Brother Tracy here is uh, employed at NCIA currently. That's right. My name is Tracy Barnes. Uh, most of the brothers call me Amin. Uh, I was given that name by the brothers of the Masjid uh, because of my characteristics. Amin means honest and trustworthy. Uh, right now, uh, I am the business office manager for the Muslim Community Culture Center. Uh, elected a business office manager. When I was a juvenile, I, I was down Lexington Terrace Projects. I grew up, born and raised down Lexington Terrace Projects. Uh, basically was out there doing what I had to do. Uh, I never denied selling drugs. Uh, I did sell drugs to make some money. Uh, didn't equate it with doing a bad thing because it was a norm, you know. Uh, so I only only equated doing a bad thing when actually when I got older, really that it was a, it was a really bad thing to do. Uh, however, I was incarcerated. I got locked up at the age of 17. Uh, went to jail at 18. Uh, I was given I was the first person in Maryland to receive a 15 year mandatory sentence for a subsequent offenses law. Uh, prior because I have caught a drug charge six months prior to check, catching my next drug charge. Uh, and they imposed a 15-year mandatory sentence. Uh, but through, through my incarceration, uh, uh, I, I did the whole 12 and a half years on it. Uh, Judge Tordy didn't relieve me of any sentences through my uh, uh, incarceration. You know, uh, when I was released, I came into a halfway house uh, back into society, whereas though a lot of my friends uh, was waiting for me to come home. They was actually waiting because they were still living the lifestyle. And through their multiple incarcerations and coming back home, multiple incarcerations coming back home, they still in the, in the background waiting for me to come back home. Uh, I was always known as a person that had a knack for getting money illegally or on the street. And they wanted me to be a part of them, which I would probably enhance their drug deals or their involvement in, in the illegal system. Uh, when I came when I came home, it was dead. I mean, they were saying, "Here you go. Here go this. Here go a key. Here go half. Here go hundred grams. Here go this. Let's get it. Let's get it cracking. Let's get it rocking. Uh, here go five thousand. Here go two thousand. I mean, it was dead. As soon as I come out the door. So, but at that time, I was going to college. You know, I was going to Sojourn Douglas College where Brother Earl out of me was my instructor <laughs> over there. So, in, in the college, per se, I mean, the brothers were there, it, they, they just surrounded me. It was all Muslims, predominantly Muslim brothers there, or Afrocentric brothers there that kind of persuaded me not to go back to that lifestyle. Look, look, what, look what, you, what you have uh, forthcoming in this lifestyle and things of that nature. And I can say for a fact, the decision was really hard because... Everything was there, given to me on a plate, on a plate, and it was hard for me to say or denounce. Look, man, I'm going this way, and I and I, I didn't get no enemies, but people just stopped coming around me who was living that lifestyle, and I was happy behind of it because at the particular time, that's when I met my wife. When a lot of people stopped coming around me, when, my, when people was coming around me, my wife was standing away from me. It's like who are all these strange guys, you know, you know. So I mean, so they accepted me and and. and and by me coming into St. John Douglas College, I ran across the, or came in contact with the Muslim Community Culture Center up here. And again, I mean, it, it was good. But during my going to school there, I went to apply for a few jobs. And because I was young, I couldn't say because I, I was Afro-American, and I had a strike behind me, which I was an ex-felon. I went to apply for Viola Transportation Services, and basically they said because of my Felon, felonies that they couldn't uh, actually uh, bring me on board to work for them. Now it was a few companies 
uh, that told me that per se. Uh, then a few of them just said, well, because of your record, you can't come in. And a lot of doors was, was closed behind me until I ran across a, a, a guy named Bruce Patel at Family Advocacy via uh, Dave Tracy and Earl Alamine. And, and this is a, a time where as though the company had never brought in an ex-felon ex to work for a company. And Dave Tracy took it to the CEO, which was Bruce Patel, uh, because they never did it before. And Bruce Patel interviewed me himself and said, yeah, we need you. We need you because you have what we're trying to portray to these juveniles here. And he hired me around the spot. He said, be here Monday. And he, and he brought me in and gave me the opportunity to show my worth. You know, uh, at the time, I still had to report back and forth to parole and things of that nature. And I was in a halfway house. I wasn't even home. So, I mean, it was like, wow, this is a big thing. Whoever did this, fortunately, which was a good thing, I stayed with the company 12 and a half years. Homeowner, family, family man, man, married with two kids, both my kids in charter school, you know, uh, three kids, you know, uh, and I'm a grand, and I'm a pop pop.